Do you suspect that you have a rotator cuff tear? Maybe you're a little concerned about going to the doctor. We're going to show you a few simple tests that you can do at home to do a self-assessment and see if you have to go to the doctor if you possibly have a tear. So the only way to really uh, um, truly know if you have a rotator cuff tear is obviously an MRI, okay, or an ultrasound, okay. MRI is really the gold standard, um, but other conditions can mimic uh, what a rotator cuff tear looks like. So these tests will kind of narrow it down and give you a better uh, chance that you're looking at a tear or not a tear. Okay, so the rotator cuff um, is a series of four muscles that are basically um, are part of the shoulder complex. Okay, so this is our right shoulder right here. And one of the functions of the rotator cuff is essentially trying to keep this humeral head kind of stuck. This is a very shallow socket, okay? So we have, let's say, pretend this is the socket of my right shoulder. This is the humeral head. It keeps it in that area so it doesn't shift and move out of that spot right there. The deltoids and other bigger muscles pull and tug the rotator cuff keeps it kind of in the joint, this very shallow joint, so when it moves, it doesn't lose contact. It doesn't kind of bounce around in there. You also have the joint capsule, kind of this dense ligamentous structure that kind of wraps around the top here that provides stability, so it doesn't shift out of that shallow socket. You have the labrum, which is kind of like the meniscus of the, you know, the meniscus of the shoulder. It's a piece of cartilage that's inside and kind of increases the depth of the socket, actually. It's a piece of cartilage that goes around. But what we're going to talk for today, the main issue is, do we have a damage to the series of tendons, those four muscles, as they become, as they attach to the humeral head here, they act like a, almost like a very wide area. They kind of sit there like my fingers there. And is any portion of that um, disrupted? So there's other diagnoses or things that can be going on inside the shoulder that we have to consider that might be causing pain or being the pain generator, okay? Um, you can have something where you don't have, you don't actually have a tear, but you're, you've impinged, they call it a shoulder impingement syndrome, where you're essentially, in theory, they feel as you're narrowing and you're jamming some of these structures as you raise your arm, are getting crowded in this space right here between the tip of the shoulder and the humeral head, and they're getting compressed. It'd be the bursa, some of the tendons are getting irritated. Okay, not torn, but irritated by swelling inflammation, and they call it a shoulder impingement syndrome, and that can be a diagnosis that similar, is similar to a tear, presents somewhat similar. You can also have something called a, a bicipal tendonitis, pains more typically in the front of the shoulder, and that can be affected by shoulder motion or turning, um, you know, breathing, you know, like almost like you know, turning a knob or something like that, and that can be in the front. You can also have another condition called an adhesive capsulitis or a frozen shoulder. And that's that bag, that capsule I was talking about, actually shrinks. It actually narrows. And since it's tight, it makes it very hard to move. And it looks very similar to a, fro to a rotator cuff tear, but it's a different reason why you have pain and loss of motion, okay? And they're very, very painful as well. and can give you a lot of night pain, similar to a rotator cuff tear. And also, um, there are issues that, you know, you'll have difficulty with shoulder motion, but it's actually related to something going on in the neck. Some of the nerves coming off the neck to the shoulder are affecting how the shoulder functions. Okay, so just think about we've got these electrical impulses, these nerves that go out to different muscles in the shoulder, and it affects, it makes it look like it's weakness related to a shoulder problem or a rotator cuff problem. But in actuality, it's coming from our neck. So anytime we look at shoulder problems in the clinic, we always want to say, have the person check their neck motion, see if there's any connection with neck mobility or neck, neck problems that's actually reproduced at the shoulder. So that's another thing that we have to consider um, when we do these tests. We may be looking at a neck issue that actually presents like a shoulder issue. If you really are enjoying this video, hit the like button, okay? If you have any questions, throw a comment in there. We'd love to give you some feedback on what you do once we go over the tests. Um, and definitely subscribe to our channel. Um, if you do subscribe, the best way to hear about it is turn on notifications. So the first test we're going to talk about is called the liftoff test or subscapularis um, test. Subscapularis is that muscle we were talking about and then eventually becomes tendon. It's the, probably, it's the one that's least commonly torn. It's not as common, but it's the first test we're going to do. So when you do the test, you can stand up, bring your arm back, and you want to be able to, sometimes it's even hard to get into this position. If you can't, then, you know, that doesn't mean you have a subscapularis tear, it's just you can't do the test. So you're going to bring your hand off your back and you want to try and lift it off your back. If you're unable to do that, that's an indication of possible tear of the subscapularis uh, tendon in the rotator cuff. 
Okay, the next one we're going to look at is for the infraspinatus, which is this muscle that's just below the, the, uh, the, the called this the spinous scapula. So if you look on me, this is where my spine is, this muscle here that attaches to the humeral head. So as you do this test, in the clinic, I'll do this test with someone. If you have to do it yourself, you're going to bring your arm out to 90 degrees, push your arm back, and try and prevent, if your arm can't stay in this position, so you push it back as far as you can, as far as it goes, let it go. If it flops forward, that means it's a sign, it's a sign that you have a partial or a full thickness tear of the infraspinatus, okay? So same, the same thing again, all the way up, push it back into external, into this position, and if it flops forward, you can't hold it forward, it might be an indication that that tendon has some form of tear. Another test is just an infraspinatus or an external rotator test. External rotator just means the direction that the um, that that particular muscle engages. So if we're going to test the ex the uh, infraspinatus, which is we just showed in another test earlier, it's right about here. You're going to hold your arm to your side, and what you can do is you want to hold, pretend like you're a rock. You're going to try and push down against this side, okay, and try and resist it. If it feels like it gives or it's painful, a uh, weaker painful, that might be a sign of a positive test. What's a good way to do with all these tests is to do the same test on the opposite side. Most likely you're not going to have both sides have tears. So if you have trouble with one side of the test and you're not sure, redo any of these tests on the opposite side. So say, just check like, oh, wow, is there a difference? Well, they're the same, you know, they're just weak. Um, or wow, this is very different from the other side. So consider that with any of these tests. The other tests we can do, they indicate either um, inflammation or possibly a tear of the supraspinatus, which is the, when we look at the shoulder here, this muscle rests on the top here, goes underneath this bone called the acromium and attaches here. So it's more on the top, kind of the upper trap or below the upper trap muscle here. And it goes down right underneath the acromium and attaches uh, to the humeral head. So the one test is called the empty can test, where you're taking your thumb, you're, if this is forward about 30 degrees out, you turn both thumbs down and you apply gentle pressure, gradual pressure and increase it and try and hold it. Pain or weakness during this test is an indication of something going on the rotator cuff tendon. It may not be exactly a tear, but it could be a tear. Um, a test that's a little, um, a little bit less provocative um, is doing the, the called the uh, open can test first. Same idea, you're in the same position, a little bit wider apply pressure downward. It's a little, uh, it's not as provocative, so I sometimes start with this test first, um, you know, before we go to the uh, empty can, which can be a little bit hard. Okay, so positive test. Most likely there's something going on in the supraspinatus that's affecting the function, and uh, we want to look a little bit further. Now, when you're doing all these tests, if all these tests are very positive, it's probably a strong indication that we have something going on in the rotator cuff. Obviously, we have to make sure there's not a neck involvement. Um, but if you have all those tests that are positive, you should probably get a good physical therapy evaluation or go to your orthopedist. But let's kind of look and dig a little closer. The next step would be to kind of do uh, an x-ray, um, MRI, or ultrasound. Those are some of the, the imaging they may suggest if you have these positive tests. Now with a rotator cuff tear, uh, one of the contentions, if you truly have a tear, um, and there's a certain window as far as whether you can have surgery and whether surgery is more successful. So with rotator cuff tears compared to some other problems, you have a window and you want to kind of act on it quickly. So if you're having trouble, you want to seek help and advice quickly because there's a certain amount of time before you can do a repair of the rotator cuff. So, so these are the one of the times in orthopedics that you don't want to delay unnecessarily. You really want to collect some information and know what you're dealing with. I hope this helped you out. So collect some information, try these tests. When in doubt, get a good um, physical therapist or orthopedic evaluation. Have a great day.